Hi everyone, welcome back to To Be Like Christ. A little bit of a delay since our last video. I had some computer problems and uh, that's a story for another day. But today we are going to take a look at Psalm 85. Psalm 85 is a psalm of the sons of Korah and we don't have any New Testament references today. In today's themes we're going to talk about two different sides of God. First, God's anger against sin and then God's salvation that restores sinners and fills their land with righteousness. And just one word to define, it appears in verse 4, it's indignation. Indignation is God's anger towards sin. Psalm 85 is comprised of 13 verses. I've entitled it, Restore Us Again. So this psalm was written after a period of discipline in uh, Judah or Israel. We're not exactly told. We don't have the context exactly. But the people of God, basically, they had been disciplined. And this psalm is following up on that discipline. The text says that God's hot anger had been directed towards his people, but now things seem to be improving. The people were repenting and they were asking God for forgiveness. In fact, the psalmist wrote that the people had experienced some measure of God's forgiveness. He writes in verse 2, You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. So the psalmist here is praying for God's mercies to continue, for his anger to be completely extinguished, and for him to restore the nation. He asked God to revive his helpless people and to speak peace to them rather than the angry words that they had probably received prior to this. Uh, he was hopeful that God would answer this prayer and he says, quote, in verse 9, Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. The end of the psalm describes this reconciliation between God and his people in really beautiful terms. And I want to just read you verses 10 through 13 as we close up our outline section. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. And there's a phrase in there that I want to take for our application section. The psalmist gives us this really interesting and beautiful picture of a meeting of two virtues, the virtue of righteousness and peace. In verse 10, the psalmist writes, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Now, in a lot of cultures, not so much, you know, in the culture that I was born into in the, in the U.S., but uh, where I live now in Albania, for example, and in many other uh, European cultures, it's very common for friends to kiss each other when they greet each other, especially when uh, they've been apart for a really long time and they're being finally you know, reunited. So in Psalm 85, we have this reunion between righteousness and peace. And these are two virtues that are often estranged from one another because of the interference of sin. You think about God's demand for righteousness and our sins. Well, that doesn't leave us with a lot of peace, does it? Well, there was an event in history that took care of this problem. The greatest reunion and reconciliation of peace and righteousness took place at Calvary when Jesus died for our sins on the cross. Since Jesus died for our sins, we are able to be declared righteous. And that brings us into a relationship of peace with God. So we see the reunion of righteousness and peace. And the righteousness that has been bestowed on us and the peace that comes with that need never be separated or estranged again so long as our trust remains in Jesus. 